Morning. Last night, I decided to go live and play Donkey Kong Country on the arcade stick because I wanted to do something a little different. I was like, ah, let's have some fun. Let's play games a little bit, I don't know, more challenging. I don't know. It was just like an idea I had. I'm like, I, I don't know if playing a game like Donkey Kong Country is going to be fun with an arcade stick, but I did it anyway. And uh, I actually feel like I played somewhat better than normal. I mean, I did the, uh, the crazy... I forgot the name of it, the rail level. We've all we all know that level. It's dang near impossible. I did it first try, which felt pretty dope. But it hit me. I was like, in this pure Zen state. It was there was so much joy in my heart playing Donkey Kong Country. And then I have been also playing Zelda Link's Awakening on here. I was gonna say Link to the Past, but I don't have a link to the link to the past on there. And that as well has been very, very nice. And I thought to myself, in wake of Call of Duty Black Ops 6 coming out, all these huge games hitting the, you know, different eShops or Microsoft, whatever, why, why am I so drawn to these nostalgic titles? I'm, like, genuinely curious. I think one of the biggest things is, like, gaming as a whole is, like, a comfort thing for me. I've been playing games my whole life, but it's been on, you know, Nintendo, and I... Recently, I mean, the Steam Deck has kind of taken over my gaming, I wouldn't say gaming life, but like my gaming interest. And primarily that's because it's like the modern day version of what Nintendo used to grant me. It used to grant me access to games that I thought were magnificent. And some of the graphics that exist or some of the, the you know, visuals that exist on the Steam Deck are impressive. And 3DS for me was probably one of the more impressive handheld experiences back in the day but like time dude time is really the biggest thing and I remember as a kid homework going over to friends house like different stuff like that time was you know a little bit we had I had so much more time as a kid but there was this element of like oh I want to play my game but life also was moving at a certain pace and for me that like that kind of combination of being able to play my games wherever however i want as well as you know with friends in the room whatever was such a powerful thing for me um i've mentioned it so many times over and over again but like the game boy advance sp was so magical and it wasn't just because of the games that existed there because the games yeah they were just game boy games but it was the way i could play i've always been a huge fan like a massive fan of um, handheld for the form factor, the experience that exists with that style of gaming. And I think for me, experience is really the number one most important thing when it comes to gaming. I mean, the games themselves, of course, they're important to have, but the experience that's granted when playing that game. Part of the reason why I think last night was such a fun time for me streaming was because I was playing a game Donkey Kong Country one of my favorite platformers of all time one of the hardest platformers I would say uh, well I mean one of the harder ones with an arcade stick that experience for me was very special and it was also one that was newer I haven't done that before I hadn't tried to do it before I got through halfway of the game not doing any cheat sees right and by cheat sees you guys know like the um what's it called the rewinds I did it once to like test a strat but like i'm playing 100 percent of the game not 100 percenting it but 100 percent of the game on stream over on twitch.tv slash jdx coffee with the arcade stick i i find myself being drawn back to nintendo over and over again because i think gaming as a whole feels really repetitive and convoluted now that's an interesting statement that's a really interesting statement for someone who plays on Nintendo. Nintendo is notorious for being repetitive. I mean, Mario games are repetitive, but there's this element of gaming for me as a gamer that realizes that nostalgia, the skin of nostalgia is so much more important than like a lot of things in the gaming space. I was playing, oh, what game was it? Oh, Final Fantasy VII. Okay, Final, the original Final Fantasy VII. Final Fantasy VII on my Steam Deck. I ended up modding it, which was pretty fun. Not the easiest experience, but still was able to mod it. In modding it, I also um, made it look a little bit smoother. I increased the frame rate, so the frames were a little bit more acceptable versus 30 and 15 frames per second. It was 60 and 30. Um, and that experience was cool, but 
I had some people in chat that had played that game a bunch of times already. And I said, does this modding experience, does this um, new look to the game, a new skin of the game actually increase the quality for you or do you find it to be more distracting? And um, one person's like, I've played this game well over a dozen times. It's kind of take it or leave it. This game is perfect to me. And I thought to myself, that is a really interesting statement because it's not perfect by any stretch. The game itself is dated. Polygonal gaming just didn't age beautifully, I don't think. I mean, if you haven't played the game and you're playing it for the first time here in 2024, I think that you're gonna, oh geez, I think that you're gonna find yourself being like, uh, which side do I go? This side. I think you're gonna find yourself being like, okay, this is a little bit intense when it comes to the look, right? So like, for instance, let me give you an example. Mario 64. Mario 64 is an incredible game, I think. I love Mario 64. I can play it now. I do play it now. Oh, one of the stickers is coming off. Did it fully come off? Play through Mario 64. It's fine. Polygonal gaming. It actually looks awful. Ocarina of Time looks awful, but the nostalgia over the game itself is the mod, right? And this is the, the realization I had. If you've played the game and nostalgia is in your brain, it skins it for you. You're just like, oh, this game is perfect. This game is awesome. But then if you're like a younger, the next generation of gaming, you're like, this game's awful. The mechanics are terrible. It's slow. It's choppy. This, it, it looks bad. And you're right. It is. Ocarina of Time, for me, is a perfect game. I love that game, but it looks terrible. It really does, objectively so. I mean, the, the textures are bad. The polygonal part of it is not. I mean, the bottle is a freaking, looks like a bag. The bottom part of it's pointing when you're drinking out of the bottle. I mean, come on. And don't get me started on Mario 64. Mario 64 is a dumpster fire of textures. It just is not a good game objectively but it's a masterpiece it is one of the most delicious warm hugs of gaming that i can experience today i have original hardware that doesn't scale well and still that experience is incredible for me and i'm realizing that nostalgia has such a huge part of the gaming space for someone like myself I would consider myself a nostalgic gamer. I find myself drawn to experiences that remind me of how gaming used to be. Not because gaming was better, because I don't know if it was better. I don't think it was better. It may have been, but I, I personally don't know if I can say that objectively. But what I can say is that I sat down last night and played Donkey Kong Country and couldn't stop smiling. I purchased Sparking Zero, incredible fighting game. I've been enjoying it. But I sooner want to play my Nintendo Switch and play an older game on a Super Nintendo emulator with an arcade stick. I mean, I'm playing through Pokemon and going through the newer Pokemon games, but I'm also on the chromatic playing through Pokemon Crystal. Quality of life improvements definitely are missed, but I will say the linear aspect of this story as well as the very, very grindy nature of it and the somewhat tedious aspects of the game itself. Nostalgic, incredible, beautiful, memories unlocked, objective good game. No, no, <laughs> no. XP share is an item that you have to get later. So you have to actually hot swap your Pokemon out. You have to uh, really grind to get your Pokemon to the right level. And there are a lot of other issues that come with the game. There's no quick save, which we've all become so accustomed to. That's another thing that I grew to genuinely appreciate while I was playing Donkey Kong yesterday. I got a game over and it set me back four stages. I had to go back and do four courses because there's no auto save. There's no, oh, you died. Here's five new lives. Here's all of your hearts back. Here's everything. And you get to start fresh. There's so much consequence. And for me, that, I, I guess, was in place. I mean, when you think about it, that might have been in place to extend the length and the life cycle of the game. But as someone who struggles to complete games, I realize that a lot of it has to do with consequence, also ADHD, but consequence. There's no consequence. There's no stakes. You just can go and you can get better, I guess, but it just it doesn't matter. 
it just doesn't matter. Games allow you to just button mash your way to the end. Now, I know that this isn't all the games, but the games I play, right? One more unforgiving type of game is a Souls-like game, which for me, I'm not particularly into as much because I just don't like that style of game. I, if I'm gonna play an RPG, I like the care. I like to play the character, right? And so RPGs for me are like I want to play as the character and develop that character's story. I if a game allows me to customize the character and customize the whole look of the character themselves, like cool. I'm playing through Final Fantasy 14 with some friends and it's it's fun and MMO, but like. I'll be honest, I am far more interested in playing as Link for 200 plus hours going through a land and just adventuring than I would if I created my own Hylian and just went through Hyrule and was trying to, you know, do my thing there. I, I like playing as Mario going through his world. I would not want to create my own human character and go through the Mushroom Kingdom in an open world aspect or even a stage like aspect. For me, playing as the character is something that I really genuinely enjoy. It's why games like Fable or, uh, I mean, Red Dead Redemption 2, you are playing as a specific person. But like these bigger games, Fallout, these bigger games are just not as exciting for me because I don't want to be the character. I want to experience the, the character themselves. Sora, Titus, Cloud, Squall, like stuff like this. I'm playing as someone. And... Gaming for me has been all over the place over the years, primarily because of content creation. Content creation killed gaming for me, and that's a huge, huge, huge problem for me, right? And, and that's my own, right? That's absolutely my own. Reviewing products and this, that, and the other, being critical in that regard. And over these past, you know, few days, talking with friends... One question was asked while I was playing Final Fantasy XIV because I was talking about like Twitch and stuff like that. And I was just like, they asked me, hey, what do you play when you're off stream? And I'm like, oh, I just grab my Switch. All right, my Steam Deck stays in my office usually. Or my Steam Deck, I'll, I'll be playing if I'm playing one game on there. But like genuinely, if I'm like, oh gosh, I just want to relax, I grab my Switch. And he's like, like why, why, why aren't you just using doing that more? And I laughed because I'm like, it's an a friend who I've uh, you know become we've become quick friends over these past six months but they don't they have he hasn't like seen what I've done here over over and over again um but it, it like finally you know when someone says something that you've heard 150 times but they just say it a little bit different so you're like oh yeah it hit I'm like I'm so like I realize I'm so concerned with like everything else that I just don't allow myself to enjoy it and I'm trying to be like yo uh I I have almost purchased Call of Duty 6 uh, Black Ops 6 like three times I hate don't hate I don't hate anything I dislike Call of Duty I don't enjoy it at all I tried to buy a couple other games I'm like I know stop I don't enjoy it that's that's part of the reason why yesterday I did as an exercise I'm like I'm gonna stream and play an older title um, over on Twitch. And it, dude, it has been a blast. I think that the biggest thing to learn from something like that is that it really like, it's so, there's such a detachment for content creators. Like that's what I'm realizing. The problems that I experience, like, oh man, games that is content creation. Like that's plain and simple what it is is that I am trying to create a narrative around something that is popular rather than um, have the have the narrative be the genuine excitement from me of what I'm doing. Like the problems that exist in the gaming space for me is purely because of content creation. Isn't that silly? Isn't that crazy? And when I just like, I so I now hide how many viewers I have on Twitch so I don't know, because you can do that. And I hide the, any metric that dictates tells me that I'm doing well or bad I just hide it I don't want to see it I just want I just want to like have fun um I don't know what that's gonna look like but I went back and I was watching Casey Neistat's videos and dude 
The dude just tells stories about what he is doing. I miss that. I miss it. I feel like my internet experience has been so wild, has been just like this bombardment of cookie cutter, like do this this way, get this result. And it's kind of, it's kind of crazy. It's genuinely crazy. And so, you know, when I was naive to what the internet, how to do the internet thing, I enjoyed it. So trying to be naive again. Just do silly, wacky stuff. You should join over on twitch.tv slash JDX Coffee. I like day streaming because it means I get a better night's sleep. That's my main reason. But night streaming feels cozier. So it's got to hit or miss. <sighs> All right. Time to give you guys a cup and uh, eat some breakfast because my fast window is almost over. Yeah. All right. You guys are awesome. Play more. And be kind.